Hi, my name is Sean Harris, and I'm going to be your instructor for the 10 full domains that's covered on the CISSP exam. I've been in this industry for many years uh, before anybody actually really uh, cared about it. Uh, when I started in security, I said that I was very interested in it because it was complex. You have to really understand uh, technology before you could uh, secure it. And 10 years ago, I was told, well, that's nice that you are interested in security, but you'll never have a full-time job in it. Well, not only do I have a full-time job, a lot of people have a full-time job in security because the importance of it. I've written a few books on uh, security, uh, CISSP in one The Passport, Gray Hat Hacking. I'm halfway through the CISA book right now. And I write articles for Information Security Magazine and Windows 2000. Uh, I'm on search security, so I have a lot of information throughout the industry if you're interested in, in getting more. So I'm going to be working with you and being your instructor through all of the 10 domains. Now I've taught this for about four years. My CISSP book is a best-selling book for this subject and it's going in its fourth edition. So I think you're going to be in good hands and we'll get through it together. We're going to go over the common body of knowledge, um, which makes up the CISSP exam. And this is 10 full domains uh, that we have uh, listed. It's access control, uh, information security, uh, physical security, business continuity management. And this is really foundational information for you as a practitioner, either at a company, as a security consultant, as a business person who is responsible for any type of security within your environment. So it's a good coverage of all that touches security because most people think security is just one thing, like a firewall, an IDS. They think it's very technical. But this exam is good because it covers all the components of security. And if you really get to know this information and not just study it to pass the exam, if you really know this information, it'll be useful to you uh, out in the industry. Now, the exam itself has 250 questions. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not even high tech yet. They've got, just like when you took the SAT test, you have to uh, fill in those little bubbles. Now, 25 of the questions of the exam are not even going to be graded. They're there for, they're new questions that they're kind of testing out to see if they're good questions or not. But you're not going to know which are going to be graded or which are not going to be graded. So overall, you have 250 questions that you need to answer in a six-hour period. They give you a six-hour period. Most people are done about four, four and a half hours. Uh, there's nothing that you could take in uh, for the exam, except if, you, if English is not your first language, you could take in a dictionary that goes from one language to, to English. And they're actually getting more strict about being able to take in cell phones or those types of things, so uh, nobody's going to cheat. Now, a lot of people have heard about the CISSP exam, and after you take the CISSP exam, you'll be frustrated. There's not a person who's come out of this exam and has not been frustrated. And that's because there's two reasons that this exam is difficult. One is because it covers so much information. A lot of people may have a specialty in network security, or maybe they have a specialty in business continuity, but hardly anybody really knows all 10 domains application security, operation security. So that's one reason that the exam is difficult because of all the information it covers. Now, to be truthful, the other reason that it's difficult is the way the questions are written. They're uh, not straightforward, they're a little tricky, and we're gonna go through some questions to uh, give you an example of uh, how, what you can run into. But this is a very difficult exam the questions are cognitive, which means that you can't just memorize a term and be able to answer a question. You actually not only have to understand the term and the concept, you have to apply it uh, to something in the real world. So this is more of a co cognitive test, which is, which is why you need to know the information to a certain depth instead of just um, uh, skating over it and, and trying to study a, a month before you take it. Now, 
we will be going over all of these uh, domains to quite a degree that most people don't get into. Uh, there's a lot of courses out there and a lot of products that don't get to the necessary level that you need not only to pass the exam, but even understand the elements so you can use it out in the real world. So we will be going through these and I'll be teaching you, uh, giving analogies, giving you real world uh, scenarios because that's important. Now on exam day, you do have to have a ID, a picture ID. Um, and they're going to require you to have a, a registration number to go in for the exam. And uh, you want to make sure that you have signed up for the exam and you've got your registration number back. Because every course I've ever taught, somebody didn't get their registration number because ISC Squared sent it to the wrong address or they sent it to the work address instead of home. So don't run into that issue. You have to have that registration ID before you could take this exam. Now, if you don't have enough experience, because taking, to take the CISSP exam, you have to have four years of experience, or you can have a, a, a bachelor's degree. You can read through on their website you know, the requirements to actually sit for this exam. But if you don't have that much experience in information security, they have something that's called the associates, which means you could sit for the exam and then you can get the experience and somebody has to sign off that you've actually got the experience. So people who are coming out of college are, that don't have the experience in the, in the um, industry are taking and getting an associate's degree. Uh, so don't think that you, can't, you don't have enough experience to be able to do this. Uh, there's a couple ways that you can approach it. Now it's important if you're going to, st when studying for CISSP, this is it. This, this should take over your world for quite some time because of the amount of information, the complexity of some of the information. Uh, this should be your core topic and your core uh, focus in life uh, if you really want to pass this exam because I know a lot of security professionals, very bright, very talented, very experienced, who have not passed it. So you need to take it seriously.